The cylindrical pressure vessel shown in the figure has an inside diameter of 610 millimeter and a wall thickness of 3 millimeter. It's made from aluminum alloy that has the modulus of elasticity of 70 gigapascal and the shear modulus of 26.3 gigapascals. Two strain gauges are mounted on the exterior surface of the cylinder at right angles to each other. However, the angle is not known. The angle of theta is not known. If the strains measured by two gauges are 360 and 975, what is the pressure in the vessel? Note that when the two orthogonal strains are measured, the angle is not needed for determining the normal stresses. I put this note because when I put this question on the homework, I receive lots of emails saying that the problem is wrong because we don't know how much theta is not given. So we can't, how do you expect me to solve this problem within, without giving me enough information? So we do have enough information for this problem. Let's see how can we solve it. The internal diameter is 610. I'm going to write down the data that we have. Radius is 305 millimeters. Thickness is 3. Modulus of elasticity and G are given. And I can determine Poisson's ratio from the relationship between three material properties. Nu would be 0.33 in this case. Also, we know some. there are some hidden information. Tau xy in the original plane is zero because on the, on the pressure vessels, there is no shear stress. Also, there is no shear strain on the original plane, right? So I'm going to write down strains in the, N, in the x and y directions. Epsilon x is longitudinal strain. As the equation shown here, it's P d over 4 te or pr over 2 te multiplied by 1 minus 2 nu and i can plug the values everything is known but pressure so that would be 247 p similar to that we can determine strain in the y direction which is hoop strain and that would be 1213 p so we have determined internal strains in x and y direction now we need to rotate that to get to nt directions, right? But we don't know how much is theta. How can we solve this problem? To solve that, we can form a system of equations by strain transformation. Epsilon n is this one, and we don't know how much is theta. Note that I removed tau xy because I already know that is zero. So let's plug the values that we have for this case. In this equation, p and theta are unknown. We don't know how much are these two parameters. But we can form another equation by epsilon t. Again, in that equation, p and theta are unknown. So we have two equations, two unknowns, that could be solved for determining theta and p. In this case, p is 914 kilopascals. But this is not the easy way to solve this. Why? Because we came up with two equations and two unknowns, and it requires us to solve trigonometric equation, cosine of 2 theta. But there is another way which is way faster than this one, and that is using strain invariance. We discussed about it in stress transformation. We know that <coughs> strains in two perpendicular directions are always constant. So epsilon x plus epsilon y is equal to epsilon n plus epsilon t, right? Um, epsilon x is 247p, epsilon y is 1213p, epsilon n and epsilon t are given, so there is just one unknown, and just with two lines of solution, I can determine how much is p.